And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, saying, Praise, er, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill to those on whom his favor rests. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Praise be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Kathy, for reading our scripture this morning. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Father, thank you for this time, this moment. Speak to our hearts through your word. Help us to know how we can have the peace that we so long for. And uh, just touch our lives, touch our hearts, and do the work you only do. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I saw something on the uh, internet, one of those uh, funny stories, you know, sometimes that run across your computer screen, and the person telling the story said that a wise man had given him some sage advice, and here was the advice of the wise person. The way to achieve inner peace is to finish all the things you've started. So says the guy telling the story, I looked around the house to see all the things I'd started, and hadn't finished. And before leaving the house this morning, I finished off a bottle of red wine, a bottle of white wine, <laughs> some Prozac, some cheesecake, and a box of chocolate. Chocolates. You have no idea how good I feel. <laughs> the world, all of us in this world, are searching for peace. And some of us have the Neville Chamberlain approach when he went to Hitler. Peace at any price. But that won't give you peace. I'm sure you're all familiar with the song that John Lennon wrote, Imagine. And in the world's eyes, uh, this is probably the supreme peace song of all time. And you know the lyrics. In fact, the melody is going to go in your head as I, re as I read the lyrics. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only skies. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion, too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. I actually saw the a cappella group Pentatonics perform that song on a Christmas special a few years ago. Really? No religion? No heaven? When I think of Christmas, that's not the first thing that comes to my mind. But having said that, it is a song about peace, and how sad and ironic that John Lennon should be murdered by a deranged man outside of his New York apartment. So true peace seems elusive, even to those who fight the hardest and cry the loudest for it. And according to most studies, and most of you know this, this season of the year is full of stress and distress. It's full for a lot of people with sadness, not gladness. A group called Mental Health America did a survey to find out what kind of anxieties people have this time of year, and the results showed that failing finances, missing a lost loved one, and having too much to do were the top realms, uh, reasons for being stressed out. But at the first Christmas, which we read about, and which is so familiar to us. Angels appeared to some shepherds 
and declared that peace is available. And from that last verse we read from Luke's Gospel, a passage we've heard over and over again, we find out where to find peace at last. But notice what was said about this peace that God offers to us through His Son. And on earth, peace to all on whom God's favor rests. Now notice that distinction about the angel's announcement. If you noticed this before, the good news of great joy was to all people. Remember the angel says, I have good tidings of great joy for all people, but the peace God offers rests only on those who have found God's favor. In other words, the peace only comes to those who are willing to receive this good news that God has offered. Bruce Larson wrote this, a uh, Christian writer. If you are able to receive what God wants to give, then the message of peace is for you. The highest degree of glory to God is connected with the giving of His Son. And it all starts in heaven with God's perfect plan and it arrives on earth where peace comes to those who personalize the message. It's available to all, but activated only for those who accept Emmanuel, God with us, for those who believe and those who receive. In fact, John tells us in his Gospel, yet to all, talking about Jesus, yet to all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. So when Jesus begins His ministry in His hometown of Nazareth, He's asked to read in the synagogue on a Sabbath. And so He reads from Isaiah chapter 61, and He tells the crowd, as He reads, reads that, He says, this Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words... These words in the gospel, in the book of Isaiah, he's saying, are about him. And here's the words he read. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. See, Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. And the word brokenhearted denotes those who are Broken, obviously. Those who are deeply afflicted and saddened. Those who are downcast and dejected. It includes all kinds of people. It includes those who are crushed by loss or trampled by circumstances. It includes those who are broken by bereavement or beaten down by abuse. Despairing because of disappointment. Incapacitated by physical ailments. Smothered by loneliness. Victimized by aggressors. Rejected by the people they love, paralyzed by bad decisions, and destitute because of sin. It includes all of that. So brokenness hits us physically, relationally, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. And so in times like this, we can take great comfort Psalm 34.18 says this, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Aren't you glad that Jesus binds up the brokenhearted? Isaiah 9.6 tells us that one of Jesus' name is Prince of Peace. And literally, in the Hebrew, that means the prince whose coming brings peace. He bandages that which is broken. Jesus gives each of us personal attention, like a sheep, like a shepherd would do. Soothing the pain. Healing and restoring us to wholeness. In short, He brings peace where there is no peace. And you know what? We are all broken in some way. All of us. Now some of us hide it better than others. 
We could say there are camouflage Christians. <laughs> Maybe you're hurting, but you hide it from others. But hidden or not, here's the good news. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. In fact, as we're talking about peace this morning, the word peace in the New Testament means to join together, to set at one again. It has the idea of being glued back together. And it's used at least four ways in the Bible. So let's look at those quickly. The first way is this. Peace with God. Before we can understand the first uh, dimension of peace, we have to come to grips with the state of our relationship with God apart from Christ. This is hard for us to hear, but while God loves us and cherishes us, and that's what the message of the Bible is all about, in the first chapter of the book of Romans, Paul reminds us that, here's what he says, this is a quote, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Wow. See, see, there's a war going on, according to Paul. And God didn't start the war. But He does offer us a way to peace. In fact, later in the book of Romans, in chapter 5, verse 1, that's where Paul wrote these words. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, you and I can now be at peace with God. That's what that verse says. In fact, Colossians 1.20, another book Paul wrote, says that Jesus reconciled Himself to all things, and I quote, making peace through His blood shed on the cross. So that truth is very important for us to grasp because peace only sounds wonderful to us when we realize or recognize we've been at odds with God because of our own choices, because of our own sinfulness. So listen carefully. We don't deserve this peace, but because of God's great love for you, for me, He provided a way for us to have peace with the God of the universe. So let me ask you this morning. Do you have peace with God today? Or are you far away from Him? Do you feel disconnected? Because your connection with God comes by being connected to Jesus. No matter how far away you feel, Allow the truth of Isaiah 57, 19 to wash over you. Here's what he says. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal you. So peace with God. That's the first step in this peace. The second one is the peace of God. And in order to have the peace of God internally, we must first experience peace with God vertically. And so that upward dimension must be taken care of before this inward peace that God wants to give us can permeate our lives. Those at peace with God can experience the peace of God. Shortly before Jesus died, He declared, and I think this is one of the verses we read earlier today in our call to worship, John 14, 27, He said, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't like the peace the world gives, so don't be troubled or afraid. This inner peace is a gift from Jesus. And it comes as a key element of the fruit of the Spirit. Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. So we will experience this peace in proportion to the room we give the Holy Spirit in our lives. So how much of our lives are we yielding to Him so we can experience this peace? And even, this happens a lot, even when situations and circumstances in our lives get crazy and they feel out of control, what do we do then? 
Well, the Bible tells us. Paul, once again, the book of Philippians said this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So peace with God, the peace of God, and the next thing the Bible talks about is peace with others. When we're at peace with God, when we have the peace of God internally in us, we can then be at peace with others. Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Isn't it interesting that Jesus didn't tell us to be peacekeepers? but peacemakers. In fact, that word in the Greek can actually mean also peace workers. It takes effort to bring conflict to an end. And when we work at resolving conflict, we're doing what God does. God wants to bring peace. So we're called to make peace when we're involved in any conflict. John uh, Romans 14, 19 lays out our responsibility as Christians Paul wrote this, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual building up. I know how families work. And some of you may be even dreading Christmas. Because you're in conflict with someone in your family. Maybe a root of bitterness has gone down deep into your life. And it's time to let it go. It's time to be a peacemaker. So if you want to have a peaceful, that means full of peace, Christmas, then go in the spirit of love and fix the broken relationships in your life. Do everything you can. Don't put it off any longer. Drop your pride. Drop your resentment. Drop your grudges. And go set it right. So with the help of God, go make peace today. Christmas offers us the gift of peace with others. But it's up to us to accept that gift and to work for that gift to happen. So peace with others. And finally, peace for others. The only way for people to have peace with God to have peace of God inside, and to be at peace with others is for people like us to tell them about the gospel of peace. Peter declares the essence of this gospel in Acts chapter 10, where he says this, You know the message of God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. And so just as the shepherds hurried off from the manger, you remember how the story ends, they went with joy to tell the good news. So must we share peace with others. You know, I recently read a survey that said 82% of people without a church are receptive to attend church if they are invited and escorted by a friend. Isn't that amazing? People may not be religious, they may not be that interested in Christianity, but there's a spiritual hunger in people's hearts. And if people invite them and offer to pick them up and escort them, not just invite them, it says 82% of people are open to that. Isn't that amazing? And that's good news. Here's the bad news. Only 21% of church-going Christians have ever invited someone to church. This is what Christmas is all about. It's about God coming into the lives of fear-filled people in a fear-filled world and bringing the gift of peace. And His peace allows those of us who would have thought we could 
be a part of something so big that we never could have been a part of that, we can find our rightful place in the story of God's love for all people. And so, as we respond to this, and we experience the peace of God, it gives us a new walk. It gives us a new purpose to share His hope, to share His peace, to share His joy, to share His love with people who are longing for those very special gifts that only He can give. You see, because that's what every single person wants for Christmas, even if they don't know it yet. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for the gift of true peace. And we realize, Lord, that true peace is not found in a gift under a tree. But true peace Himself was put on a tree called the cross to make peace for us. Thank You, Jesus, for being willing to do that. And I pray over everyone gathered here today, Lord, the benediction Paul wrote. Now may the Lord of peace Himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. In Jesus' name, Amen.